Alright, here's the video of the quick gear layout of what I used on the elk hunting trip as promised. Uh, I'm just going to start off with what was in my pockets, what was on my person, and then what was in the bag the whole time. So it's pretty simple. What was in my pockets the whole time. My phone in one pocket I used Onyx Maps and in the other my uh, Swiss Army pocket knife and a lighter and this knife had the famous Swiss Army pocket knife saw blade which was useful for so many things. Great tool. Really like it. <clears throat> uh, next on me in my uh, in my vinyl harness uh, I had the rangefinder attached to it. I had the wind checking powder, my calls, and the GoPro. I actually didn't carry binos. I just used this as a uh, as a GoPro case, <clears throat> and it worked out well for that. My calls. I had three different diaphragm calls in this little uh, Primos case, and um, they're actually Rocky Mountain hunting calls. And my bugle tube which was the other thing I carried was uh, this Phelps Game Calls. I know that's a faux pas, but uh, I really like this uh, bugle tube. Um, it's the unrivaled and the size of it, uh, how I carried it on my chest, it worked out really well. Like that. Um, diaphragms, they really didn't sound right. They're old. I got them last year, and uh, they just really never sounded right. So I'm going to get new diaphragm calls for next season and then the last thing was the uh, just a reed call I kept around my neck and this this is also Rocky Mountain hunting calls this never sounded right either <clears throat> I had a really tough time with that so I'll probably get a new one of those um, all right actually before I go into the pack just talk about the clothes I wore uh, start with the bottom work my way up um, Darn tough wool socks. I always had a pair of those. I kept another heavyweight pair for sleeping that stayed in the pack. Um, pants I wore. These are, which I need to get a new pair because they got worn out and the knees ripped, which always happens with these. They're uh, cool, K U H L, that brand. Um, they're pretty rugged. I mean, they took a beating. I can't really complain. It's like the third pair I've had. Um, uh, they work really well. I like them for what I do. They're, but the, the knees do eventually tear out on them. And uh, so I need to get new ones. Uh, then for t-shirt, this is a uh, this is a smart wool. So it's a merino wool t-shirt. I'm not going to get into why I prefer wool, specifically merino wool, in this video. But it's, it's the best. Um, so that. Then a first light merino wool. Long sleeve, which I wore a lot. Sometimes I wore it by itself. The half zip was awesome for ventilation, especially when it was hot early on, but it still had the long sleeves for protection going through the brush. Really liked it. My, uh, my boots here, if you want to call them boots, they're more of like a shoe, hiking shoe. They're super lightweight. These are ultra running Lone Peaks, and uh, they're very breathable, super light. See, they're flexible. I like a boot like this. I don't want a, a, uh, uh, any type of a, a shank or a stiff sole because uh, I feel you get better you get better contact with this type of shoe when you're walking on rocks or logs, things like that. And um, this is what I prefer. It's a zero drop minimalist and uh, super big fan of that. These were brand new when I started. Obviously, they're already falling apart again. It's like second pair of these I've had, and I need to get another pair. And then I, the gaiters uh, uh, that they come with, the four-point gaiters, so they kind of attach at four points to the shoe, and uh, they have nothing, they have no stirrup or any strap that goes underneath the bottom that would get caught on everything, which I've had happen in the past with other gaiters, especially when these don't have that, uh, kind of that gap or that arch between the heel and the rest of your foot. So um, I really like these gaiters. The only problem is the material. They look like Swiss cheese right now. They, uh, th this stuff's made for someone that's gonna go hike on a trail, not doing what I did. So uh, it, it wears out so quickly. And uh, I wish it was a, a more durable um, 
uh, you know, brush and cut resistant material. But I like the height of them. Short gator keeps my uh, the bottom of my pants uh, tucked in and keeps all that brush out. And uh, so I love it. I love this setup. Just wish it was more durable. All right, that's that. Now we'll get into the the pack. This is the Exo Pack K3. 4800. I got it multi cam. Really like this pack. I'll say that right off the bat. Um, especially once I got the right frame, uh, it was just great. I put a lot of miles on this pack, carried it every day, and uh, it was just awesome. All these sheds um, carry these out with this pack, so it worked really well. The skull, if I had gotten a bull, obviously I would have packed out the meat with this. Um, really big fan of this. Um, all right, so top flap. Uh, kind of in here. I kept this was a uh, This is just a I bought this at Walmart um, uh, Power bank I could get two full Charges for my cell phone out of this pretty lightweight um, So this kind of became my go-to thing before and I kept in this top flap all of my Camera batteries and cords and memory cards things like that before that I was carrying this which I got on Amazon, and it's one of these fancy solar, supposedly solar powered battery banks. And the idea with this was that I'd be able to strap this to the outside of the pack, keep it charged, and then charge my phone, the GoPro, the camera batteries, everything with this. It's really just a glorified battery bank. It doesn't charge, it never, it never charged, not significantly, being strapped to the pack, and it was a real pain and a nuisance. So. Not, and it was immediately began falling apart. It's not rugged. It's just uh, it couldn't hold up to this sort of thing like it said it would. So I wasn't impressed with that. And uh, it basically was a brick. So I ditched that. It's like a pound and a half. Next thing in the other top flat, uh, there are two smaller and bigger. I kept my beanie for when it got cold. I had a set of these first light. Can't remember what they're called they're like a merino with leather gloves i kept a uh, a fixed blade knife which was going to be used to uh, field dress an animal mostly if uh, i got one i also had the work sharp field sharpener um, which is a great tool for its weight the value is significant um, i kept the plunger I'll show you in a minute for the filter, um, the the Sawyer filter system, which uh, for back flushing to keep the flow rate as efficient as possible. Headlamp, and I always had extra batteries in there, which I took out right now. And then this, I have uh, I think 50 feet of this. Uh, this is like a Dyneema um, type of cordage, so I get more length of this cord for less weight than I would your typical paracord and it's stronger it's like 1500 pound tensile strength so what I found carrying this is less bulk and less weight and longer length than the paracord so yeah and this stuff doesn't stretch it really doesn't stretch at all so I kind of like this it was like five bucks for 50 feet huge fan of this over paracord that's all I had in that all right, now uh, getting into the pack, it's empty right now, but this was my food bag. It's just a mesh drawstring food bag, and uh, I carried three to four days of supply of food in this, and uh, I had a little carabiner, and I could string this up like you saw me do several times if I was concerned about the bears getting into my food, which I ended up not being at all. Uh, I had a couple extra layers in here. This is an L.L. Bean Primaloft jacket. Primaloft is an awesome insulating material, lightweight, packable. Then this is uh, one of my favorite things. It's a Vormi blowdown pullover. It's like a, um, what do they call it? They call it like a waterproof wool or something like that. It's not really waterproof, but it does have a, a lot more durability and uh, somewhat of a wind resistance than just standard wool. Uh, I love this thing. I wear it all the time. Then I had, so you're gonna notice with all this stuff, I took it out of the original sacks that it came in, the stuff sacks, 
and I put those aside and I just use the pack itself so everything gets stuffed into it. It's just one big giant stuff sack. Way easier. Definitely the way the technique I prefer. This is the uh, War Bonnet Outdoors. This is Gracie by the way. She's uh, She helps me with all this stuff. This is the War Bonnet Outdoors uh, Blackbird Original with what they call um, whoopee slings. These are just an adjustable sling. It's made out of the same material as this stuff. So super lightweight. Awesome setup. Huge fan. You know how big of a fan I am for this hammock. I wouldn't trade this thing for a king size bed. It's just some of the best sleep I've ever gotten spending this hammock. So I recommend that. And there's a lot of different options with hammocks. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, this is an expensive option, but for as much as I, I've used it, I think it's well worth it. All right, then I had also a war bonnet. This is called the under quilt, and this is the insulation that goes underneath the hammock. And uh, it's down, this is a 20 degree. So this is super light. It clips to the bottom of the hammock on each side, and uh, that kept me insulated underneath. Huge fan of that. The problem with, um, if you don't have this sort of thing, and you're trying to use a sleeping pad in a hammock, you slide out of it and that's kind of a and then you end up cold and that's not fun or uh, if you're just in your sleeping bag you're compressing everything you're laying on so it's not going to keep you warm so this doesn't get compressed awesome huge fan uh, this was a liner bag uh, it adds like I don't know 15 degrees something like that it's a prima loft big Agnes liner bag I only carried this at the end when it got really cold at night and I needed it uh, other than that, I had this, which is a 10 degree down, it's called a top quilt, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a sleeping bag for hammocks, so, um, it's, uh, basically you just pull, put your feet in it and pull it over you versus trying to zip yourself up, so it's easier getting in and out and to use in a hammock. This is a 10 degree duck down, I think, and, uh, my hammock gear, don't know if I said that already, this, uh, this worked out really well, pretty awesome. Kind of a big fan of that one now, too. Um, last couple things I had inside in the bottom. This is just a, uh, I gotta replace this with something uh, less bulky and lighter. This is a um, first aid kit. It's kind of more of a first aid kit. This has uh, a lot more supplies in here than you'll typically find. So it was good to have, not that I needed it, but I was prepared if I did. This is a war bonnet rain jacket. It's made out of, I believe it's the same material that the hammock's made out of, super lightweight, just a waterproof barrier, uh, you know, in case I need it for rain or wind. And then game bags, again, these are full elk quarter bone on game bags or unboned meat, I guess. Um, pretty big and bulky, these are pretty just standard sheep gonna replace these gonna get something higher quality gonna get the game bags that are for deboned meat smaller less weight less bulk because that's what I plan on doing anyway so uh, that's one of the things that I will improve on next year all right that's it for the main bag oh also what I don't have uh, in the main bag there was a uh, I just had it in a Ziploc with a little compact toothbrush, um, toothpaste, and uh, flossers and chapstick. That's all I had. I don't have it in there right now. That was my hygiene, basically. This I ended up uh, getting rid of later on. This was a, uh, I kind of called it my base camp water bag. So I started off with, uh, this is I believe a 10 liter water this is another faux pas I kind of mix match stuff but that's how it goes this is a Katahdin 10 liter base camp water bag which is great because uh, in that base camp situation I could have all the water that I needed and then fill my camel back cook do all that stuff it's kind of a luxury but I liked having it it's lightweight and the setup for that when I was running on that is not their filter they have a filter that goes in that and it's just a gravity feed bag to that filter those filters are expensive and uh, I didn't want to replace it. I was just using the bag when I was filtering it with was uh, the Sawyer Squeeze, which I recommend. This is uh, 
I've used this for a long time now. It works well. It's got a good flow rate versus the Mini, which I'll show you in a second, which was my backup. But uh, basically just add an attachment for this tube coming on that bag. And that's how I was filtering everything. This broke, uh, if you remember at that point, when I was way back in and it broke on me and I didn't have the backup at that point because I had spiked camp the one time. And uh, so that was bad, but I reached out to Sawyer and they're pretty awesome about it. And they've already sent me a new one, a whole new kit with this filter and the squeeze bag and everything else. So pretty impressed with that. Thanks, Sawyer. The other thing I had here was my stove kit. This was kind of my primary setup and uh, it's all right, it worked. I'm going to make some improvements on it, but uh, one of these canisters, um, if I had a full canister, I could get about four days out of it. That's with, you know, uh, boiling water for breakfast and boiling water in the evening for, uh, for the meal and for tea and all that stuff. So it got uh, about four days of use out of that. Kept the lighter in there, small lighter. This is the MSR, this is for the stove, the MSR pocket rocket. It's all right, it works, got the job done. There's no uh, windbreak or wind protection, so that would definitely affect the flame and the amount of time it would take to boil water. Uh, so I might make an improvement on that. The reason I had this over a jet boil uh, is because this allowed me to simmer better. Uh, cooking things like the rice, the mac and cheese, and stuff like that, where I'm not just needing to boil water for the uh, freeze dry because I got away from that. And then this is just a standard kind of canteen cup. And uh, what I'm looking at is getting one that has a lid with the, uh, with the bail handle that can be hung over the fire because, is that a good one, Grace? Good girl. Um, when I did have to cook over the fire because I ran out of fuel for the stove, it was really hard to get this set where I wanted it and it fell over on me once and then so it took twice as long to boil water and it was kind of a pain but uh, so yeah one with a bail handle and uh, I've kind of seen different options hammock gear makes one you know they're like titanium that sort of thing but yeah this is the tall and you know, so it's like a 750 milliliter or something like that um, which is a good size so that worked pretty well the other thing I had for my Crocs. I had one in this side and one in this side. I'm wearing them right now. Uh, I had a 16 ounce Nalgene, which is the right size. I like this because you saw me make my coffee in it, which works okay. It was an inexpensive alternative to, uh, you know, some of the uh, commercial products or whatever. But uh, 16 ounce, I could do my coffee. I could do the Tailwind Nutrition Powder or the Noon Tablets, stuff like that. So I liked having that. I uh, I don't really like drinking from a Camelback. I like having a Camelback. I don't like having to drink through a straw like that. I like just being able to drink water. So this allowed me to do that. And uh, it also, these Nalgene's can handle boiling water. So I could put my, um, I could fill this with boiling water and take it into my sleeping bag with me and keep it right here as an additional way to keep me warm for a while while I was sleeping so it's kind of a good thing to have and then this is the I'm not gonna take this out this is the tarp for the hammock it basically makes it in, you know complete enclosed shelter around the hammock um, pretty light awesome tool and a set of stakes for that. So, lastly, this is the uh, the, uh, the camelback sleeve in the bag, and this is the setup I had. So this is the Sawyer mini filter. Same thing as the squeeze, right? Just a smaller size, and with that smaller size, much less um, flow rate. It's much slower. It takes a lot longer. And then this was just a, a normal three liter camelback, right? And it had the, the big top flap opening, which I like. And uh, there's probably a few things I'm forgetting, but that's it for the most part. And uh, it worked pretty well. I got it dialed in near the end, pretty happy with it. 
Last thing I was carrying for, at the beginning anyway, was this guy, and this is just a, you know, telescoping, ultralight fishing reel, and uh, pretty light, and then I had a little fishing kit with a couple lures, but uh, this is great, this is awesome. Uh, I really like this thing, it's just a Walmart, you know, like $20 setup here, but it works well. And uh, it's like a five and a half foot rod, just pull it out, you can fish those little creeks, catch yourself dinner, stuff like that. I don't know what it weighs, but uh, if you're in the area and there's good fishing, then it's probably worth its weight for that value. And otherwise, you just see a bunch of these old sheds. I pretty much carried everyone out, as I usually do. I call them participation trophies. That's basically what they are, but it's still neat. So that's it for this video. It's the gear review, the gear layout. And uh, I will be making a lot of improvements on all of this going forward next year. And uh, the more I do it, the more I learn, and the better off I am.